We are live with uh, Xtip Daily, and um, today we're going to talk about uh, the radios. So uh, here on the table, I have a, uh, a CR. Let me find a camera here. I have a CR03, and of course, there's a lot of different radios. Um, we start getting into it in greater detail. They almost look the same, so I'm not going to um, pull out all of them out. I have an antenna here, and there's a lot of different antennas. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And of course, in order to communicate with each other here, we need two radios with two antennas. And it doesn't have to be, uh, it can be a CR on the one hand end and an RL on the other end, but they have to be CR03 in both ends, or like O3s in both ends. So a CR03 to a ILO3 or CR03 to another CR03, and ILO3 to another IL3, and the same with two and one. So, let's go back to um, the presentation here. So, the agenda for today is that, why do we have so many radios? You know, there's IL1, 2, and 3, and CR1, 2, and 3, and so on. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about lower radio in general. Not a lot. I'm trying to... The, the target for me here is not going into super technical stuff and not necessarily the stuff you need, uh, all the stuff you need to understand when you want to program lower radio, but kind of like more the stuff that will be nice to know if you uh, want to talk about our radios, our lower radio in general. And then a bit about the antenna connector. It's very important when you want to find an antenna. I'm going to show you why just now. And then, of course, the antenna and then we're going to talk a little bit about the stuff between. And then we have a final calculation that kind of like give you the overall idea about why we have um, lower radios. So as I said, one of the things we want to talk about is that what is in between the two radios. Okay, so why so many radios? Well, the first major thing is that the world haven't been able to decide, decide on a common frequency for everything. So radio frequency have existed for a very long time, and the world has been divided for a very long time. So there is something called the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, and uh, they are um, seated in Europe, and our time zone zero is in Europe, and that region is called Region 1. So uh, that region is Europe, Africa and Russia plus the countries that was part of Russia back when Russia was USSR so um, a lot of those countries you can see Mongolia is also a part of that and then we have um, region 2 um, sorry I'm getting a message that says it's offline oh, on okay. both my devices Okay, thanks. Sorry. Okay. Um. Okay, I was told that it's offline, but it looks like here that it's online, so I just need to make sure that it is indeed online. Um, can I just check on another device here? Sorry about the intermezzo, but we are all beginners here. Um, no, it looks live. I am assuming it's live. Um, okay, so um, sorry. Now I'm going ahead of myself. Yeah, so let's get back to it. So we have these um, uh, three regions. So region one is uh, Africa, Europe, Russia. Some of those countries are there. Region two is Americas, North and South America. And region three is the rest of the world, and I actually say rest of the world because uh, region three haven't agreed on a, a region either. 
uh, sorry, on a, on a common um, um, common frequencies for these things either. So there's different frequencies in Australia and different frequencies in, for example, China. So uh, even though they're the same region, they don't have a common frequency. So we have made lower radio for region one and two. So let me get a little bit into, uh, oh yeah, and I just want to say that there's actually one frequency that the whole world have agreed on, and that's 2.4 gigahertz, or 2,400 megahertz. And that's the reason why we use that for Bluetooth, we use it for Wi-Fi, for Zigbee, Threat, all those different common protocols that you, some of them you know, some you don't know, and they're all like being used um, on that specific frequency because all can agree on it. Now, 2.4 gigahertz is a quite high frequency, um, but higher frequency have a pro and a con. The higher the frequency, the more data you can transfer. So, for example, you probably heard about uh, uh, um, uh, um, you know the new network for cell phones and things like that, that goes up in even higher frequencies, and the f the f higher frequencies can transmit way more data. So you can you know watch live 4K videos and things like that. But the price is that you can't transmit very far. So you have to have antennas very close. You have to you're probably gonna transmit with a higher power to kind of like get the same throughput. If you have a lower frequency, then you can transmit much longer distance, but it's come to the price that is very little data. So low frequency, you know, uh, the, what we're using in the lower radio here is great because we're just going to send like a temperature data. We're not going to use it to upload a HD movie or anything like that. So therefore, a low frequency is a very good for 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 LoRa that also give us long range. So lower long range. So I'm gonna talk about the radios here uh, we have. So we have the ILO one, two and three, and the CR one, two and three. The difference between CR and IL is that the CR have a core built in. So on the back of the of the of the radios, actually on the front because the module. So if you look here on my screen here. That chip that sits there in the front is actually the same chip that sits on the CC01. And uh, the module, the radio module, is then sitting here on the back. So um, the IL radios doesn't have uh, that chip on. They have another chip that converts the, um, the, the signal so we can understand it in I2C. So that's the IL. Now, why do we have both? Well, actually, back when we started in Exynabox, we couldn't figure out to get that converter chip to work. So we couldn't get the IL radio to work. And we had to deliver stuff in the early 2017. So we decided to go for the CR radios. So, for example, the first version of the XK07 kit had CR radios, and the next version had IL when we then learned to fix it. The third column here is the frequency. So you can see the 433 is... Um, you know, um, a much lower frequency than 868 and 915 is. So 868 and 915 is very close to each other in this um, the way to look at it here. And the reason why I'm saying it like that is because these frequencies are center frequencies. They have like a band to both sides. So for example, 915 is the center frequency and it goes to plus minus 15 uh, megahertz, so it goes from like 900 megahertz to 930 megahertz. It's not the same for all frequencies, but in this case, it's like that. Now, because they're so close, the antenna also have to match the frequency. So antenna length is di have a direct correlation to the frequency it sends. The higher frequency, the shorter antenna. So one of the reasons why I don't see an antenna, for example, on a CW1 our 2.4 gigahertz module, uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi module, is because it's a so high frequency, so the antenna can be very short, so we can print it on the PCB on the back. On the 433, the antenna have to be um, much longer than the 868. Now, the one I'm showing here has long antennas on, but they could be much shorter. I just have these antenna here because I want to demonstrate um, an awkwardness just now. So 
868915 is close enough antenna wise that you can get an antenna that can cover both. So in our ecosystem, we will use the same antenna for CIO2, CIO3, ILO2, ILO3, while the ILO1 and CIO1 will have a f an antenna that looks different. They also have different modules, and you can see it's IFM96 for the ILO1 and 95 for O2 and O3. They're still different, even though they have that the name is different, um, the same module. On the module itself, it actually qualifies whether it's an 868 or 915 radio. Now, I just jump to the last column, well, uh, column first. So you can see region here is region one for ILO one and two, and, uh, and region two for, uh, uh, for ILO three. So why do we have two radios for ILO one? Well, first of all, um, you have a, a, f a longer transmission, you know, that, that, that you can further read you, longer transmission distance on the ILO one CR one because it have that lower frequency. So we really like that. But there's another reason, and that is the 433 megahertz also falls within the ham radio frequency. Ham radio is this amateur radio uh, band, and radio amateurs around the world have been able to get their own frequencies. So 433 falls within, um, I think it's called 70 centimeter band. So they have a frequency band. The only hiccup is that if you want to use the radio as part of being a radio amateur, you have to have a radio amateur license. And that's not necessarily easy to get. So the 433 falls inside this frequency and these frequency or these bands are called ISM bands. And it's actually bands that was set aside for stuff that generate radio noise. And because there was kind of like garbage channels, <coughs> people figured out, well, if you don't ma ca care what's in these frequencies, we're gonna use them just to send something where we're not licensed. So that's what, how they were created. Now, uh, uh, ILO 1433 is a frequency we use, can use here in Africa and in Europe um, because it's part of this ISM you know, channel, but they can also use it in the US or the rest of the world if they're radio amateurs. So we kind of like include it there, and these radios we use, they're lower radios, but they also do other radio functionality, so you can use them as other radios. You don't have to use them only as lower radios. They can do other, what's called modulation types. So they have other protocols they can communicate with. We use them mainly for LoRa because that's uh, the most effective uh, uh, solution that these radios can be used for, but they ca can also be um, used for other things. And therefore the 433 radio, the CI1, AI-L1 could be interesting for radio amateurs as well. Ah, and then we come to the interesting part. And that is, it have a transmission power of 20 dBm, and it have a, um, um, uh, it can receive with minus 148 dB, uh, 148, minus 148 dBm. So that is sensitivity. It's a ultra sensitive radius. When you see this thing here with a minus 148 dBm, if you get anything away from today's talk, then it is that our radio is very, very sensitive. And I demonstrated just on this slide, but we're going to get back to this again and again, is that 100 milliwatts, now a 100 watts, you can know a 100 watt light and things like that. So this is energy we use to transmit it with. Now DBM, their logarithmic scale, while milliwatts and watts here is on a normal linear scale. So for example, 200 milliwatts, a so double up in power, only moves you from 20 dBm to 23 dBm. So it doesn't really help that you muscle a lot of power in and transmit a lot of power. You should rather focus <coughs> on making sure that you have a lot of listening capacity because that doesn't cost any power. You just have to have a very sensitive circuit so you can pick up the signals. But it not going to be low power if you transmit with a higher power than, for example, 100 milliwatt. So in the calculation we do at the end of this talk here, you can either use the 20 dBm or the 100 milliwatt. I suggest we just stick to the 20 dBm. 
and we remember the minus 148 dBm. Okay, so LoRa, very short, uh, chirp spec uh, spread spectrum, low power, long range. You can read more about it, it's very technical. I don't re really understand all of it either, um, but it have a lot of different frequencies. So the way you can kind of like think about it is that the LoRa is like, it have a lot of different telephone numbers. So if one of them is occupied, it just jumps to one of the other ones. So here is uh, the rate at uh, the frequencies for the European band, and this is for lower band, not just the uh, lower in general. So this is the frequencies they allocated for lower van for the things network. Um, so lower van is kind of like a overbuilt on lower, where there's kind of like everybody have agreed how they communicate in in both ends. When you use lower alone and you have your own radios, there's a lot of stuff you can kind of like skip and just say, no, I'll do it my way. And that's, for example, we've done on XK07. We have our own little protocol that we communicate with. But if you want to do lower van, then we have to adhere to like a, um, a protocol that sits on a higher level. There's a global network that's called the Things Network. So on the bottom of the screen here, you can see there's a, a link here where if you want to figure out what frequency they use in what country, then you can go there and then you can see which country uses CIO1, CIO2, and CIO3. Uh, based on that list there. But uh, when it comes to reading one and two, you save with, with the yellow and blue as I showed in the beginning. It's only if you want to try to uh, get it out to some of the other countries, you have to figure out if you have a radio that covers this. In the next section, I'm going to talk about a little bit political incorrectness. You know, so the main communication between our radios is I square C. And there we have a very political incorrect term, master and slave. And in the connectors, you will see we have an incorrect term here of female male. Now, people in the electronic industry, they normally talk together like this thing here. They're long forgotten uh, where it comes from and things like that. So they just talk about it. But I think we as X in a Box just have to realize that when we talk about it, we many times talk to people that may be not in the electronic industry and they might get offended with some of these terms. They existed forever. There's been a lot of attempts to change these uh, terms. It doesn't really happen. So we still call it master and slave. We still have a connector that's female and male. So here's the antenna connector. Now we have in this little table, we have SMA connectors, which is the column to the left. And we have RP SMA, which is column to the right. Now we are not using the RPS, uh, RP SMA. You can see that the top one is called a male connector and it's very much a female connector. They call it a male RPSMA. So the whole thing is that if you have to go out and find an antenna, you have to find an antenna where it's a male SMA. Uh, that is uh, very important because our X chips are using the female SMA. Okay? So uh, RPSMA, it cannot be you have to have SMA and you have a male for the antenna and you have a female for the ILO one. And I want to demonstrate uh, what happens when this thing here goes wrong. So here on the table, I have this, um, and I'm going to find the camera here. I have these two things, uh, uh, antenna and the CR3. And when we bought this thing here, you can see this one here is actually a, um, a female uh, well, they call it a male RPSMA, okay? But it's female in nature. And here I have a little piece of wire I put in because, of course, this is also female. So a couple of years ago, we bought these antenna here and we plugged them in. And it worked when we were sitting at the office because an IL like this thing here can communicate, you know, between, you know, five, ten meters like this thing here in an office environment. It doesn't need the antenna. But as soon as we went out, we just screwed the antenna in here. Well, actually, we had screwed them in already and thought it worked with the antenna, and we had no signal. And it took us a whole day to figure out that they're both females in nature here. So what I'd done was that I took this little piece of wire here, and then we put that in between, and we got that to work. So that's the reason why I'm saying is that they screwed together perfectly. You think it's all right? and you don't notice that, hey, there's no connection uh, in between the, the center pins. And those are the important connections. 
So when you buy an antenna, here's the, the, the little screen dump from uh, from Didikey. So we have this monopole antenna. And the first part here is that you have to find the right frequency. Here it says 433. Now remember it's a sender frequency. So 434 helps. There's a, you know, you, you can have antennas that have like 433 and also have 86S and 915 or they have like oil frequencies that might have 2.4 gigahertz. And they like combined antennas. There's a lot of antenna development where they combine different antennas. So you don't have to have uh, more than one antenna in your circuit if there was that your circuit could handle more frequencies. Here I've chosen a 433. The gain is 2 dBi. So it's still dB. Just think about it from the dB point of view. An antenna here that's called dBi. I'm not getting into why. And the termination is SMA male. So this is a nice antenna. 2 dB. So the monopole antenna looks like this thing here. And it gives you 2 dB in gain. But if I take, for example, this monster here, which is called a Yagi antenna, then you only get 11 dB. Now remember, we have a sensitivity of 148. So whether you have 2 or 11 doesn't really matter if the ratio was like 130 versus 148 dB. That's where it kind of like counts. Uh, the other thing is that with a Yagi antenna, you have to point at your circuit in other end. With a monopole antenna, the way a monopole antenna works is that everything that's above the antenna, and I'm trying to find it here, so above here, all the way around works. So if I lie down here, then everything on this side doesn't really receive anything. It receives on that side. That is the re reason why when you kind of like have a phone in your hand in the old days of walkie-talkie, you will have the antenna hold up. Um, like this thing here. That also means that when you put it in a balloon, you should have the, the antenna hanging down from the balloon. So not up on the balloon, but hanging down because you want to communicate with something that's below you. So while you don't have to point the tip of the antenna, actually right at the tip there is no signal either, but it, you don't have to point right at the tip, but it's kind of like a donut shape, half donut shape, that kind of like say this is the area that it works in above the antenna here. <clears throat> the important thing is that, you know, normally we use the antennas on such short distance, so we don't really have to focus too much on pointing the antenna. But if the longer we want to reach, the more important it is that we make sure that we get the best signal with the antenna. So with a Yagi antenna, they, they cost way more, they're much more complicated, they're not easy to transport, they're blowing the wind, etc., 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 and it just moves yourself from 2 dBm to 11 dBm. The last thing I want to talk to you about before we get into like uh, the calculation here is that a Fresnel zone. So the, most of the radius works on very short distance between... Uh, you know, different rooms, even though there's a closed door, or there's like, you know, your Wi-Fi doesn't necessarily able to see your other stuff directly. But you also know that your Wi-Fi gets worse when there are more and more brick walls or concrete walls between your Wi-Fi router and a router and your device. So the thing is that uh, a radio is like the free air. So on the top picture here on the screen, you can see here's two buildings. The antenna is seven meter above the ground, and uh, there's 700 meter between each other. So if there's 700 between each other, the Fresnel zone can be calculated to be 2.8 meter to both sides. So if a bus drives past there that's five meter high, then it interrupts this Fresnel zone with 80 centimeter, and that uh, interferes with the signal. So a line of sight is, you know, if you have a very narrow path, the line of sight, then other kind of communication like laser and things like that is much better. But if you have room for a Fresnel zone like this thing here, which you normally have is you put antenna high up in a mountain, then it's not a problem. You can see the next thing here is uh, five meter up and there's three kilometer between the houses here. And we calculated this thing here probably with a flat earth. Come back to that. Um, but the Fresnel zone go 5.7 meter to both sides, so 
it goes 70 centimeter into the ground, so the groan is um, is interfering. And of course, the same you have, you know, with all kind of other calculation. 1.4 kilometer give 3.9 meter to both sides. So now you have to keep yourself within 6.1 meter from the middle here to uh, to be in a on a safe side. So, link budget. So this is kind of like, how long can I read? This is like some of the questions I sometimes have. And I'm going to give you uh, the answer here that you can calculate to yourself. Okay? And there's a little piece of math. And this is interesting also for, for school projects and things like that. This is actually, uh, there's a lot to maybe learn about ratios in general. But the math here is plus and minus. There's nothing, as long as we keep ourselves to DBM, the whole budget here is, and that's the reason why they call it budget, is it's a budget similar to, you know, a uh, travel budget. So the green parts on this uh, screen here is all the stuff. Sorry, I was um, um, on the wrong screen here. So on the on this, this is the link budget here. So on the on the, um, on the green stuff on the screen is uh, is stuff that. Um, that's plus side of the link budget. And the red is the stuff that's on the minus side of the link budget. No, no, I know, I know, I know. <coughs> Sorry, I missed a, a, a slide before, but um, so, so what I have here is uh, is you can see that we have the transmit power here, an array to then transmit. Then we have a cable to the antenna. That's what we normally have. In our case here, there's of course no cable in between the antenna and the, and the radio. And then we have the antenna. And then there's a path between the two antennas, you know, like a, uh, uh, there's stuff in between. And then there's of course antenna on the radio on the other side. And then there's a, a maybe a cable in between and then there's a radio that receive so if we look here on this little example here i have my two radios and they are like a, um, uh, there's like a pass here between and we want to figure out how long can this pass be okay so if i use this example here then if you look at uh, the transmission power here we had 20 dbm so my my table I had in the beginning, remember I said that we can transmit with 20 dBm or 100 milliwatts, but let's keep it 20 dBm. I also said that if you transmit it with, with uh, uh, 200 milliwatt, it will just move it to 23 dBm. So we keep it there, and then we can receive the 148 dBm. We put a minus on the other side for this link budget. It's just the way you calculate link budget is that one have minus. The rest is just normal numbers here. And then, of course, the antenna, we're going to use those monopole antenna I showed before. So there's two dBm, uh, here we call it dBi, but it's still just uh, plus and minus. So two dBi antenna, and you can look that up in a data sheet and things like that. So you know this is what they have. And then the cable loss here, we should put zero in. But we don't know when we generated our radios here. We didn't have all the... Um, advanced equipment to see exactly if there's any radio loss the way we mounted our connector. So we just like, for the sake of it, we can just put in a number. We could put zero in. I just chose to put like 5 dBm in on both sides. Sorry, um, back here. I've, I'm chosen to put in 5 dBm, a dBi on both sides. Just so this is the loss we kind of like have. Uh, on, on the cable. And you can see the way the diagram is, the longer the cable is, the more you lose. You know, the transmission power on the radio is straight, the antenna is, this is it, you get 2 dBi, there's no plus and minus there, or up and down. Cables going down, linear, but the pass, the distance between radio, it's highest in the beginning and it's kind of like flattened out. So, the longer you go, once you kind of like, if you read like, you know, uh, 200 kilometers, whatever, then going to maybe 300 kilometers doesn't seem to be uh, that much further in the calculation of uh, path loss if you can get a signal like that. 
So it's in the beginning that they lose the most of the, the value here. So let me go to the browser and kind of like uh, show how this thing here looks like. So here we have a link budget calculator. And, uh, and you can see here that there's a calculation down there where they take all the numbers and I put the budget together. So there's also like some difficult calculation here, but I'm gonna uh, show you with the link uh, calculator how you avoid this thing here. So we first of all go in and say, we wanna calculate with this DBM because that's what, what the data sheet showed. So that was 20. And then in the other end, we have minus 148, okay? Then what I wanna do is that, and maybe I should just um, go back to the power presentation here. So we have two on antenna and we have five on the cable here. So we go back and we say, here is the transmitting antenna two and the receiving antenna is two and we have other transmission loss here with the cable and things like that. We just put five on both of them. And then we have this free space path loss. Now, there is like, how do you calculate that? Well, luckily here, you can go in and put a frequency in, and then it just wants a frequency and how many kilometers. So we wanna go in and say megahertz, and we wanna go in and put 433.25. That is our ILO2, uh, sorry, ILO1, and then, Distance, how far do we want to go? Well, let's say if we can go 100 kilometers. Now, we calculate if the number is positive, then it's, that is how much power we're receiving with. So you can see here, we're receiving with 23 dBm. So that's a good value, good solid value. We don't want this thing here to get negative or close to zero. So 100 kilometers is great. What if we do 200 kilometers? Then it go from 36 to 30. So we lose 6 dBm. What if we go to a thousand kilometer? So there we go down to 16. So we only went from 20 to 16. So then long straights only cost us another 4 dBm. So can we then transmit that long? Well, I believe the Earth is round. Hopefully most of you listeners do too. So here's an Earth curve calculator. So if I say, in metric here that I'm standing, say, 10 meter over ground. You know, that's like third floor on the roof of your house or whatever. And I wanna communicate a thousand kilometer. How high should my antenna be in the other end? Well, uh, in the other end, the target hidden height, so you can see here, there's a calculation here that shows that this is how high I am and this is how high uh, the target should be, and that should be 76 kilometers. Now, 76 kilometers is really, really high because not even high altitude balloon flies to this thing here. So, a thousand kilometers is going to be difficult. Well, what if I go up and I communicate from one balloon to another balloon? Let's just get crazy here. Well, then I can do 5,000, and you can see I still have to be 43 kilometers up. So, a thousand kilometers is just not uh, feasible. Let's drop it to 500, and with 500, two balloons, both around five kilometer, can communicate to each other. Let me get down on the ground again, and I'm just saying 10 meter. Then you can see 18 kilometers. So what about 250, we go further down. So now we have to be down in five kilometers. Okay, that's an altitude. We can fly our balloon in uh, pretty safely. So we shouldn't expect to be able to communicate more than 250 kilometers. Now, remember, this is like not taking into consideration the, uh, the Fresnel zone, they're like if there's obstacles in between. So we go back here and um, we go in and put in 250 kilometers. And we say calculate and we get like 28 dBm as our link budget. So when we want to kind of like figure out how much you know um, we can transmit with then we are putting these numbers together and you can see the calculation here there's like a formula down here how this is calculated and this thing here converts this freeze pass where you just say what radio it is the last thing i just want to demonstrate here is that what if i take like a ilo3 so now it was 28 dbm and if i take a ilo3 and say 915 here 
same distance from 28 dBm to 22, 22 dBm. So that's like 6 dBm out there on that distance. Okay. What if it's 10 kilometer? Well, then we have 50, let's say 5 kilometer. Then we have 50, 60 dBm. And with 433 to 5, we go from 56 to 62. That's still 6 dBm. So that's the reason why we have this other ratio also, is because we have a, a, a 6 dBm. And remember, the antenna is 2 dBm. So you know, kind of like the calculation from our side is that, well, you know, two antenna for 2 dBm, uh, and we can just change the frequency and we get 6 dBm uh, that way. And of course, we get that because we have ILO1 in both, both ends. So that's it for me. I'm a bit over time here, and I'm sure uh, I'm sorry about some of the hiccups, but um, this is how it is um, when we go through this and uh, learn about this thing here. I just want to see if there's any question here, and um, there is no questions. Uh, everybody's just happy. So with that, I'm going to close off and say uh, thank you very much.